All right, first reaction from IV Unit 3, we're going to look at oxides plus water. We have magnesium oxide, zinc oxide, and phosphorus pentoxide. So what we're looking at is as we move across the periodic table from the left to the staircase to the right, what happens to the basicity or acidity of the oxide when it reacts with water. Now in order to read that, we're going to put a little bit of universal indicator in each of these. And they should start off as greenish. Here in Michigan, they'll even be slightly basic usually because we have a little bit of limestone from our Great Lakes. There we go, green, green, green. And what we'll find is that when we add magnesium oxide, any metal oxide plus water should produce a reaction where we end up producing a base. And we should see that universal indicator change from green to blue or maybe even purple as it's shaken. And then the zinc oxide being in the middle means we end up producing a basic and an acidic product. And so we end up with a neutral overall reaction. So we'd expect this to kind of stay green. And maybe a little blue, maybe a little yellow, but for the most part we expect it to remain mostly neutral. So those are both reacting. And they're both a little cloudy because not all of the salt dissolves. In the last one here, we have the phosphorus oxide. When we add that to water, we should end up forming something acidic, and therefore we would expect this to turn red or orange. And so we see the trend that as we move from the metallic to the non-metallic, we end up going from a basic reaction to, to an amphoteric, really, to an acidic. Here's some sodium metal that's been melted and is now reacting with chlorine gas. So we have an alkali metal reacting with the halogen. There we go. And from there, we can just take a piece of the lithium metal and put it in the water. Before we do, we can go ahead and scoop the rest away just in case something bad happens. Get all of this out of here. Move that away from the water. And then I Oh, I haven't yet actually. I'm going to go put a little bit of phenolphthalein into the water. And this will turn pink if we end up producing a base. And it will stay colorless and clear if we don't. So if it's neutral or acidic, it will stay like this. And if it's basic, it will turn pink. So again, if you want to see something that's perhaps a little more reactive even than this, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description. It'll take you to the sodium and the potassium. In particular, I recommend the sodium one at the end. Six different solutions here. We have chlorine, bromine, iodine, halogens mixed with water. So chlorine gas in water, bromine liquid in water, iodine solid in water, not all dissolved yet. And then we have in reverse order sodium iodide, sodium bromide, and sodium chloride. And the goal is we're going to mix, mix each of these with the other two corresponding halides. So we're going to mix chlorine with bromide and 
iodide. We're going to mix bromine with the iodide and the chloride. We're going to mix the iodine with the bromide and the chloride. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with some iodine. We're going to put a little bit of iodine solution in here. Like that. We're going to put a little bit in here. We don't want to mix that with iodide, we do want to mix it with some bromine. I'm sorry, bromide. And we want to mix it with some chloride. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing again, we're going to take a little bit of bromine. bromine with some iodide. And with some chloride. Okay, and the last one here, we're going to go ahead and put chlorine into both. with some iodide and with some bromide. And this last two, you can definitely see a color change happening, so it might be helpful if we went ahead and did one more little thing, and that is if we mix a little bit of hexane with each one, it'll help us separate out which halogen is present. and do the same over here. So when I mix this hexane or heptane with some iodine and give that a good swirl, what we'll notice is that there's some kind of pink mixture at the top now where the iodine has mixed with the hexane. When I mix heptane with the bromine, which can look similar to the iodine when we're mixing different amounts and whatnot, it actually ends up as a very separate layer. Oh. So I've somehow contaminated that a little bit with some iodine. That's unfortunate. All right, and then chlorine here, we'll go ahead and mix with that too. We just end up with the two layers. So what we can do is we can see that as we mix this in here, we're seeing that pink layer form that shows iodine. We're seeing the same thing here. So in both these cases, iodine is what's left. And since we started with iodine, that means that no reaction has occurred. Here we end up with just bromine. So, oh, I do see a slight amount of pink on that. Oh, no, this is the one. This is the one where the iodine reacted with it and you can see that pink color kind of coming right out from there. And then here, both reacted. So in this one, we have our pink color that shows iodine formed. And in this one, we don't, and so therefore this one we know that that's bromine that formed. And so what we can do then is we can construct which things are the most reactive. Chlorine reacted with both, bromine reacted with one and not the other, and the iodine reacted with nothing. So chlorine most reactive, bromine intermediate, and then iodine is the least reactive. Alternatively, we could look at which ones are reacting. The iodide is always reacting, uh, whereas the chloride is never reacting. So the chloride here and the chloride here both don't react and leave us with what we originally started with. In part two of the video, we're going to go through what these reactions are, what they have to do with trends, and look at some more of the chemistry behind them.